setup this is. This is, uh, this is perfect. You know, for, thank you for having me here because the Grand Hotel is wonderful. And also, you know, I teach college kids for a living. So to me, it's just, hmm, it's just great to be with adults. It really is. You look, you look super. You really do. And, and I can relate to you better than I can to my college kids at Tulane, of course, because we're about the same age. You know, we're at that age where, you know, Oh, the term pulling an all-nighter starts to mean, you know, sleeping through the evening without having to get up to pee, you know. So we're, so, um, so here are my people, and uh, I want to talk to you about the financial markets. I love the financial markets. I've been doing this for 24 years. If it wasn't for the financial markets, I wouldn't get up out of bed in the morning. I, uh, I uh, get down Interstate 10 in New Orleans. I see a truck of a stock I own, and I hump a horn and wave at them, you know, because cause after all, these stocks are becoming your little friends. They are, which is uh, it's pathetic, really, when you think about it. But it, um, we're, I've really enjoyed this. You'll probably notice in the case of my speech, I... Uh, I'm not originally from Louisiana. I speak far too quickly to be from Louisiana. I'm originally from Boston. Louisiana, this would be, I don't know, maybe a month's worth of material. But, um, but it's, um, <laughs> but we, uh, <laughs> but uh, I've been here 20 years. I'm married to Louisiana, a girl from Opelousas, and I'm raising two Cajun kids at home. I got the whole thing going. And, um, and enjoyed it very much. I got to, one of the great enjoyments I had was I was the assistant state treasurer in Louisiana for six years, and I managed all the state's money up in uh, Baton Rouge. Which was quite a, which was quite a kick to have, a, you know, kind of a Yankee up there in Huey Long's house, and uh, and I was up there, and on my second day on the job, I realized that a lot of people were, in fact, still fighting the war. I had to testify in front of the Senate committee. I brought my file folder and my staff and a little sketch chart, and just before I got there, the senator said, "Before you get on the way, why don't you tell this committee where you're from?" <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So I thought, quick, I said, "I'm from the state treasurer's office, which I thought was a good answer," and um, and then he says, "What was you from before that?" And I said, uh, I taught finance at Tulane University in New Orleans, sir. He says, uh, I teach this community by hand and we go foolish. He says, Who's your bump? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I told him Boston, Massachusetts, and he said, Fine, I just think the committee needs to know who they're dealing with you. So, uh, <laughs> so we've, uh, <laughs> but I've enjoyed it a great deal. And, uh, um, you know, I've got to uh, get us on here. I've got one of these things here, by the way. You know, with me, this, I'm not very technologically sophisticated. This actually doesn't. Do anything. I think when I hit this, uh, a garage door goes up and down in Locksley or something. But it's uh, somebody there that's given me a hand with it. Let's see. Um, there we go. Um, oh, this is. Don't take any of this too seriously. Uh, another reason you might not want to take any of this too seriously is my own, at least, short-term investment track record. Um, I was. I've been in this contest a number of times. You've probably seen this. Uh, I've been in this four or five times. But this is the Wall Street Journal stock picking dark uh, dartboard. Uh, contest. And it's a very intimidating contest. They, what they do is they take four money managers and they ask them to pick one stock they think will do well over the next six months. Now, first of all, this goes against everything we teach at the university. One stock doesn't make a diversified portfolio. That's what we teach them. Uh, six months is not a long period of time. We're teaching people to be long-term investors. Um, and so nobody thought I ought to get into this. And just to intimidate the heck out of you, what they do is they take the Wall Street Journal, put it on a dartboard, and then wing four darts against it. So you compete against the darts as well. And uh, nobody thought I had to be in this. My Louisiana friends were like, "Hey, you're not going there. Dark's going to keep your butt." And um, and my Boston friends were like, "Be die, you lose the dots." So um, so I but I got in it, and I'm happy to say this would turn out a lot like my previous. This is my most recent one, in the last November. Uh, I came in fourth out of four and lost to the darts, and uh, picked a, picked a company called Maverick Two. So I had a rough outing on this, but. Uh, I have had better, better uh, contests. For instance, a couple of years ago, I went against one of the top finance minds in this country, Mike Ditka, and um, uh, I was able to beat the coach. That wasn't too difficult. They, uh, they, uh, they worked out pretty well. I was the investment instructor for the New Orleans Saints players for about four years, and that was far and away the strangest gig I've ever had. Um, if you want to know how that got started, about eight years ago, the NFL said, you know, it's a darn shame that these players that were your childhood heroes blow their money so badly, they end up making a couple of million bucks a year for two or three years, and then ten years later there's a documentary that they're living out of the overpass in an appliance box somewhere. And, um, and so to you and I, we can't understand how that would happen, but it does. It really does happen to these players. So they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to create a voluntary pension plan for the players. And it was great. You and I would kill for it. The players put in $20,000 a year pre-tax, which is like what they spend on a meal. It's nothing. And, um, and then the NFL matches it with a free $20,000, and then it goes into a tax-deferred account with some good mutual funds. Well, they did that, and they said it was expensive, but it's good PR. It's the right thing to do. So after one year, they said, how's that program going with the pension plan, voluntary pension plan? They said, well, let's take a look. Well, every NFL team has 53 players, and on average, three players participated. 
It's a free $20,000, you know. So here, too, was like, you know what that's done, Bob? Education. That's what it was, education. So, the, um, so we, they brought they in brought the university prop of every team, and uh, I did the one for the Saints. And I always remember the, remember the first class I taught, because you look out, and there's just these gigantic men in their underwear, you know, in front of you. And, uh, and, and all the other slides have X's and O's, and one, two, one, one, three, three, four, one. And, and you're up there saying, I'm a little fun. Now you, stop talking in the back of it. The, um, and uh, it was very tough. At the end of the first class, I had this guy come up to me, and he's uh, about my height and weight, and he says, Professor Shooty, I have money in a hedge fund, and I realized at the end of every quarter the publicly held securities price for the market, but how would the privately held securities price within the portfolio? And I thought, I thought Alan Funk was going to come in. I thought this was Canada Camera. He was the price kicker, just the way you always thought. They're just not.